did it today, Coach? Really well, really well. It was a really high level workout. There was a number of really interesting prospects out there today of you know all different positions. So it was a, a good overall look at, at some of the players we're definitely going to be considering with our picks. When we get to a week before the draft and some of these guys you know, some are only on fifth or sixth workout, but other guys are on 12th, 15th. Um, how do you factor in that level of fatigue that some guys may be having when it comes to a workout like this? Yeah, it's it's definitely something where, like, I talk with the coaches every morning, and on um, we definitely want to see the guys get out there and, and play through fatigue, but at the same time, we don't want to kill them and we don't want to burn them out because it ruins the workout. You know, so we definitely want to kind of pace them, and then towards the end of the workout, kind of give them give them some more conditioning and see how they fight through it. Um, but you know, this time of year, there's always like nagging injuries. There's always just the grind that these guys go through is, I mean, it, it's as bad as it gets because like you said, some guys are doing as many as 21 workouts and, and I mean, in a three, four week period, like that's just unbelievable, you know? So it's, um, it's intense and, and they all, they know it's a part of the process and they're, they're pretty good troopers with it. That's something that you look at when a guy comes in, you know yeah. how many Yeah, we've pieces. scouted these guys yeah. so much already. It, honestly, the, the biggest thing about these workouts is getting them in here, getting our staff around them. We do interviews with them. We get um, personality tests, like all, all the different kinds of things that factor in. And then all the times we've seen them live during the season, we have film on them. That's more of the true player they are. This, you kind of get some up close physical you know feeling about them and then uh, who they are as people when you're doing these personality tests what are some of the traits that you and the coaching staff value i wouldn't say so much traits it's just things that you you look for are there um like what's their what, what kind of guy are they going to be in the locker room are they are they a guy like a, a leader are they more of a follower are they a guy that you're going to have to self-start or are they a self-starter or do you have to like kind of jump start them as a team so it's definitely traits that you're looking for in in terms of what what can you expect from the kid and there's not not really like red flags or anything like that that you're worried about it's more of like okay what kind of what kind of person is this that we're bringing into the how will they mix with our current players right. sort of things yeah are those things that you're also looking at just with how they interact with the other guys that they're working oh, out very with much so them? yeah you can tell a lot of the a lot of the those tests are just confirmations on things you already kind of know and, and from interviewing with them and just being around them the little bit that we are you get a pretty good feel for you know are they talkative are they are they introverts are they um, um, you know talking up their teammates are they like very I don't know like hot-headed like just you, you kind of get a good feeling for them in the workout setting and then those tests kind of you know put the icing on the cake as far as that stuff goes. Are you guys getting close to getting like a, a number, five guys at number nine, five guys at 27? Are you close to that? Uh, I, I wouldn't say close. I mean, there's definitely, I think some people are separating themselves into those groups in the pockets. 27 is a little tougher because anything can happen in the draft and guys could end up falling that we weren't expecting. Um, but definitely in the nine range, we kind of, we know who's likely going to be off the board when we're picking and then we know who we like in that range. And then from there, over the next week, we're going to really be hashing out, like kind of, kind of pare down that yeah. that list, and then get in a tighter group. And get uh -huh. into some sort of order, do you think? Or yeah, we're we're um, most likely we don't really start worrying about order until a couple days out, just because for sure we want to see all the workouts that we're doing, and then we also want to do as much you know background work and, and things that kind of go into the figuring out which groups they are and then the last couple of days that's when we'll really start to hammer down the order even the day of like yeah. it's, it's really a lot of debating and that kind of thing is that the fun part of the night debating when you get to somebody that goes at six you don't expect and so that means someone's going to be there that you didn't expect and then you get into that discussion yeah. at those points there's not much debating going on it's more of like are right, the guys there that we wanted like are we sure about it because it's funny how things go where the way the draft is progressing, you start to, you start to, I don't want to say fall in love, but you really start liking players that are expected to be in that range. And then when guys higher up end up dropping, you're kind of like rethinking yourself, like, all right, why do we have this guy ranked ahead of the guys that we started to like? And so you start to almost double check and triple check yourself that you're, it, the order is correct. And yeah. it's, it's funny how, how that goes. But then at the end of the day, it's like, all right, we put the list together, like we have to stick with our, you know what we what we thought and you know Can't usually out exactly something. yeah it, it, usually it'll it'll end up 
correct down the road. So if you look at, at last year, both both of your picks were guys that you had previous you would have expected to go higher. Do you do you allow yourself to like does excitement start to creep in as they fall or do you not let that happen because it could they could be gone yeah. the next pick like Hedge? No, totally, totally. I think um, um, definitely like with Delon it was a we we kind of we knew we'd have a chance at him but we knew there was a couple teams ahead of us that really liked the guy. So that was kind of a as the board was coming up, or as our pick was coming up, our board still had a handful of guys that we were pretty interested in. So there was some good debate on that pick because, you know, we there was a few guys in the area, but DeLon was slotted high, so we, we went with them. And then with our second round pick, when we ended up getting it and, and Norm was still on the board, it was almost just kind of like, are we missing something on this guy? Because we had him rated so highly to where we were picking him. It was like, all right, not so much a debate, but just like, are we sure that we're, we did our homework and we, why is this guy still available type thing? And so we, you know, we pull the trigger. So those are those are kind of more of the conversations as the picks come up. It's not like you're not busy enough, but now you <laughs> might have to put on your 905 key and Pat and deal with an issue down there too. Like in yeah, we're, um, times. It's, it's a busy time of year. I, I think the good thing with that is um, nothing is official yet. And, and we're, we're all waiting mainly for the finals to finish and, and, and let that process play out. and. And um, you know we're we're just kind of a piece in the puzzle, just waiting to see see how the everything shakes out, and then from there we'll start we'll start. And I think it's it's definitely a process that we'll um, we'll we'll be pretty thorough with and make sure that we, we do the right thing. And not really rushed. I don't no. know. No, no, not at all. There's um, really like the the 905 season is such a like a, a secondary issue to the NBA to where, in a good way, to where it's yeah, like yeah. you let you let the NBA play out and then and then the 905 kind of gets the benefits of all that. So it's, we'll see how the summer goes with, with the, the NBA squad and then kind of build build to the 905. Yeah, and you would know what you want because you need a continuity with the case and yeah. the system. So yeah. it's not. No, absolutely. And, and you know, it, it's it's the type of thing where until until it's official, you know, until we're um, we're sure that's even the direction we have to go, it's um, kind of just waiting and seeing at this point. Yeah. After a player like Norm has the season that he has, do you ever think back to that night on, on, on draft and just when you're having to think, is there something we missed here? And then obviously he has the season that he has. There wasn't anything. No, it's um, honestly it's more of all the. Uh, the compliments that other yeah. teams give you for the pick, like that kind of, you're like, yeah, right, I guess we did, we did see him correctly, and and um, it, it helps you going to future drafts because it's like, all right, we did the scouting during the year to get the list where we had it, we did it correctly, like let's stick with our guns, and and when if another scenario comes up like that again, it's like you trust yourself a little bit better. So it's definitely the type of thing where it it proves your all the work, all the work we put in, the research we put in during the season. It's you know, we're, yeah, absolutely. How many voices are in the process? Uh, it, it wanes, you know, it, it's, it varies based on um, expertise, I guess. You know, we, we have a pretty, Masai's been really good about including so much of our front office staff in the um, evaluation process. Like, like, we don't have, you know, just certain guys covering certain regions and they, they have the input, it's like, Masai wants everyone to see everybody, and that way when we do come to these debates, everyone has an opinion. So, you know, it, it's probably anywhere from, you know, five to seven, eight guys, like just uh, us sitting around the table, just going back and forth and, you know, hashing it out from there. And it's like cross-checkers. If you see a guy that you really like, you send totally. another guy in to make sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, essentially. It's, um, it's kind of over the course of the season, you, you, um, if, if you see someone on TV, it's, hey, like, make sure you guys go see this guy. You know, like, you'll kind of assign scouting coverage based on stuff like that. But we, we, know, we know the key people to see, and then we just make sure everyone sees them once, twice, three times, and, and that way everyone has a really good feel for them.